Today, we are diving into everything you need to know about popping cannabis seeds to get the best possible start for your grow. You're going to learn how to store your seeds, the best methods for germination, and how to ensure strong root development from the start. These techniques will help you achieve a higher success rate for your next cannabis grow. Hey, but before we get into all that, today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Grow Dots, the easiest way to feed your high value plants. You mix Grow Dots in once at the beginning of your grow and they feed your plants all the way to harvest. You don't have to worry about nutrient burn or nutrient lockout. Grow Dots does all the hard work for you. Check them out over realgrowers.com. And while you're there, use coupon code SCOTTY420 to get 20% off off your first order now let's get back to the show come on i see you ready to get into it i am so let's actually clear the air real sure quick. you're a clone only guy why'd you want to do a video on seeds uh because seeds are awesome there's a seeds you it's a completely different thing with clones somebody says hey this is awesome this is exactly what you should expect go for it mm -hmm. with seeds you get a 10 pack and they say yo these came from awesome moms and dads play around with them and maybe you'll get something absolutely amazing and so you've got what a hundred three four months until you're where you're really excited you know it's uh it's just a different feeling in my opinion man okay so we are going to be talking about seeds though yes. and to start off I have noticed from a marketing point of view sure there's kind of like a collector mentality oh, yeah. seeds. I, I see people holding on to seeds they grab them they they start a vault, and I always worry what happens if, if something goes wrong with those seeds. So let's sure. start with, if I've got a collection of seeds, how do I make sure that when I go to pop them, they actually pop? All right. Well, first off, nature did this for you. The seed is this absolutely amazing genetic storage vessel, mm. and it is meant to be stored long-term, or at least they absolutely can be stored long-term. A uh, couple things you want to think about is that heat – yeah, first off, light is an enemy of seeds. It will degrade. It will degrade them and mm -hmm. keep them from being viable or destroy their viability. Uh, but heat is the real enemy. Heat thinks it seems to speed things up metabolically, mm -hmm. and so we want to slow them down. And uh, that means we want to keep them in a cool place. So a cool, dark place is where I store my seeds. I don't put them in the refrigerator myself. There are people that do put them in the refrigerator. I I do not. I just keep them in like a drawer of an air conditioned room where it's you know, not going to get above 80 degrees. And uh, yeah, the longer you store them, uh, the less, you know, they, they'll lose viability over time. But man, there's people that have, have stored seeds and pop seeds from 40 and 50 years. So, oh, wow. Yeah. What yeah. about? Temperature variations, like if I have in a room without air conditioning and it gets super right. hot and then super cool, does that degrade as well? I mean, I can tell you that when the, you know, from fall or when, you know, when the seed drops, mm -hmm. there's certainly a bunch of temperature variations in nature. So I don't think the real big thing is freezing. When something freezes, we know when you put an ice, you know, water in an ice cube tray and it goes above the tray. Water is one of those weird things that expands when it freezes. Mm -hmm. Nothing else expands when it freezes, man. But there's water in the seed. Yes. So. Yes. So if you have that water in the seed and you freeze it, you've got a chance of poof, yeah. blowing that thing up and destroying. So I don't like to freeze my seeds. I don't even put them in the fridge. I put them in a cool, dry place. Okay. That's just me. It's a guy that doesn't have a big seed collection. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would be interested, though, if you're watching this and yeah. you are a seed uh, fanatic. Yeah, let us let us know your thoughts. Um, help, help us make the video better. Uh, yeah, these are a lot of learning in public goes on here. I mm -hmm. definitely can, can. I will lead you in the right direction to pop your seeds and get a big fat root out of them. Uh, but I'd love your information. I lo I'd love y'all's uh, perspective on this as well. All right, so... When it comes time to actually pop the seeds, mm -hmm. you showed me this, and you have your kind of own version of it, the paper towel method. Yeah, this is somebody showed me this a long time ago. Yeah, it's very easy. Explain it. All right, you take a paper towel. I take two paper towels. Fold them in half, and then fold them in half again, and then I wet them with some recharge. I'll take some very weak recharge solution, maybe half of label rate, like literally an eighth of a teaspoon in a gallon. And the idea is I just want to pour that. I'll usually take a plate 
and I'll pour it on a plate just so the recharge doesn't get all over the place. I'm going to saturate that paper towel with it. With the seed in the fold. You know, I don't even have the seed yet. I oh, just okay. I just saturate the paper towel, and then I have it folded in half. Now I'm going to put a few seeds in there. I'll separate them maybe by... The, you know, a centimeter, half an inch or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then I'll fold the paper towel over and then I'll take that and I'll put it in a Ziploc bag. Why the Ziploc bag? Uh, Because I want to keep the moisture in there. I mean, I used to put it between two plates, you know, Mm -hmm. but the idea is you want to keep that paper towel from drying out. Yeah, they do have heating mats specifically for seeds. I think they're called seed heating mats. (laughs) <laughs> that's what they're made for man exactly it's a little bit of a, a warmer spot mm-hmm. and uh, that's going to help the the seeds pop how long do i want to keep them in the ziploc bag in the paper towel method before yeah they're ready to go should it be like a day two days yeah not long at all i mean i would check them every day it doesn't hurt anything to pull those seeds out of the paper towel open it up check i mean 24 36 hours you should see them crack and see that little tiny it's called the radical roots like a little tail coming out of those seeds okay and then when that happens let's move on to the radical root yes uh First of all, the recharge. You mentioned you like to soak them in recharge. Yes. And I know that that has a little bit to do with the radical root. Explain why you want to soak them in recharge. A lot. You, recharge has mycorrhizae. We'll just go with the mycorrhizae fungi. Mycorrhizae fungi is something that it inoculates. It attaches to a plant root, and then it starts growing on that plant root. To ask mycorrhizae, you pour it on a plant root system, and it's going to just engulf and inoculate that entire plant root system. That's a tall order. To have mycorrhizae start as soon as that, uh, as soon as that root emerges, that it has mycorrhizae, that it touches the recharge, gets inoculated with mycorrhizae, and it's on there. So now, as this root tip grows by elongation of the tip. There's mycorrhizae on there. So now you don't have to, after a month, go and pour mycorrhizae on, have it inoculate your whole root system. Your root system is growing inoculated with mycorrhizae right from the start. It's a big difference. I feel like elongation of the tip is going to get us age-gated. Is there another way to phrase that? Could be. Could be. (laughs) We're science here, all right? This is science. All right. Um, okay. I was, I use the fingernail fungus sometimes. It's kind of gross though, you know? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to jump back in the tap root. Yes. Let's, let's spend a little bit of time talking about what the tap root is and why you should be cautious about it. Sure. Sure. So, uh, when we take a clone, a clone, we're just tricking the plant into rooting and it's just developing a root mass. Uh, when we, and, and so that's different. We're just expanding that entire root mass, the, Uh, area of the container and that's going to give us our root system when it comes to a seed a seed has that tap root it's called the radical root that first little root that comes out Mm -hmm. that is the main anchor tap root whatever it is going straight down it is going to go straight down until it hits something Mm -hmm. so if it hits and and that tap root really is going to determine or has a lot to do with the size of what's going on above ground uh the root system below ground the plant likes to mimic what's going on uh above ground below ground and i've heard that when it hits something like the bottom of a solo cup or yes the bottom of the root cube I've heard that that stops. It sends a signal to the plant to stop growing. it. Yes. We're just popping a pack of seeds and we're going to clone off those seeds. I don't know that it matters that much. If you're growing something like an auto flower seed, mm-hmm. it's going to matter a lot, man. So a little bit different set of rules when it comes to auto flowers. But here's uh, some general rules of thumb for you. Okay. So we've taken our seed. We got it to pop inside of the paper towel yep. and you like to go straight into a solo cup, and cup. cup, solo cup. Yeah. Explain, explain the cup and cup method and why it's so important and kind of tied in with the tap root. Sure. Uh, cup and cup method. You're just taking once the uh, radical root pops, you're just planting it inside of, you know, the keg cups, the 16 ounce colo- solo cups mm-hmm. uh, with drain holes in the bottom. But you're using a clear one and then you're putting a clear one inside, you know, a red one or some, some kind of opaque one. And the idea is that you don't want light to hit those roots because they'll mess up the roots. So that's why you use the opaque. Cup yeah. On the outside. But you do want to be able to check the progress. So you want to be able to, you know, lift it, the clear cup out and check the root development so you know when to transplant it. 
Nice. And that kind of lets you know, hey, my roots are kind of filling out. And it gives you an idea of how far down they're going so you know. Yeah. And I'll bet you the auto flower guys will help me out. Or some of the some of the folks that uh, pop seeds all the time will help me out. Whether you cut the bottom of the solo cup out or, yeah, I'm sure there are hacks for that. But for me, I take them, I take them and I put them in the solo cup. I get them to where I can sex them at least, where I can take a clone off them. Take those solo cups, put them under 12. 12 find out if they're male or female Mm -hmm. and then i go from there so for me i'm really working with clone you know even even one generation away from popping seeds i'm still really working with clones so even when you're popping seeds your goal is still to get some good clones yeah when i'm popping seeds i'm still cloning but that's just me that's my approach to popping seeds but what about y'all give me your best tip let me know in the comments and if you like this video please hit that like button smash that subscribe button and check out the other couple videos youtube's recommending i hope you like them